are at the Goodwill today. We are at the Goodwill where we were last week and we found a $2 creamer that was worth upwards of $200. It is actually still listed on eBay, not by the time you're seeing this video. Um, but right now it is at $200, so that's super exciting. Um, but we found that here at this Goodwill. So I'm feeling good about today. I feel like there must be somewhere in there a treasure hidden on the shelf. So we're gonna head in and see what we can find that we can flip for a profit. Here we go. So we begin our Goodwill journey in the white and the frame section. And of course, one of the first things I noticed is this mug up here with the polka dots. This mug is nothing special at all. But when I pan over this direction, there are two mugs that I miss. First of all, that North Carolina mug right there is worth about $20. And the wifey Radon mug is worth about $12 to $18. So I'm not really sure how I missed those. I did. Sometimes I miss stuff, but here are some battery powered candlesticks. I've got some clear glass in these boxes. Here is another mug that is really not important. <laughs> I'm kind of kicking myself if you can't tell. Not a whole lot here in the frames, but I do notice this guy and I think, oh my gosh, this crab is great. He's fantastic for $1.99. I will take the wooden crab. Now, unfortunately this tile with the flowers, I had seen this before it got broken and it's been here long enough that it has fallen victim to the shelves. This vase right here is probably made in China. It's got a sticker on the bottom. It was covered up by the Goodwill sticker. That woman is very patriotic. I like it. I spotted this set right here and I thought, you know, this could be Fitz and Floyd, but I'm gonna have to check the bottom. And no, it is made in China. It is not Fitz and Floyd. So I make sure the tape is secure and I move along. These two tea light candles with the ghost, I liked these. It looked like they had been outside because obviously the chains are pretty rusted. Up here we've got some glass cups. I do like these, but I pass on them. And now it occurs to me that the Halloween section has grown quite a bit since our last visit. So I finally make my way down the blue aisle. did spot these plates and I always have to take a closer look but those ones were just nothing special so I left them there up here is a set of little teacups they are $4.99 they're kind of a Mari in style however they would have come with a teapot and they did not have it so I passed I really did like this plate but you can see there's some damage there on the edge and so the plate stays this blue and white stuff, I also liked this, $3.99, but the sticker on the bottom indicated that the original sale price was $8.99. And I just don't think I can do much with that as far as resale goes. But this right here, this is Ellie Smith. It is pink glass. I don't think I have ever seen an Ellie Smith moon and stars in pink. And so that was kind of exciting. Of course it went in the cart. Down here, I found a stack of plates and these had plate holders on them to hang on the wall. These plate holders can and usually do damage the plates. So that's always a concern when I find them like this. But I do look through here to see if there are any that are exceptional. This one stands out to me, but there are no markings on the back. I'm thinking it could probably be Austria or Germany.
I did spot this cookie jar here on the top shelf. I have seen shakers like this before, but I've never seen a cookie jar. And so for $3.99, I decide that it has to go live in my cart. This right here is an Aruba souvenir, but I did like the glaze on it, so I had to take a closer look. Here I spotted this tin with a cat on it, but it had a lot of denting, and so I left that behind. I did like this planter. It was obviously modern. I didn't even have to turn it over to see that, but I did like it. I found another cookie jar here. This was a teddy bear cookie jar. It was marked on the bottom. There's a bird there without a head. This pink bowl here is made by Indiana Glass. It's a console bowl. They don't sell for very much at all and they're very heavy, so I left that behind. This was interesting because it was upside down, so I had to fix it. Wait, what do we have here? <laughs> it is a Viking candle holder from Viking Glass. I'm obsessed with it and I love it and it goes in my cart. It's worth probably about $35 to $40. This has a chip. They labeled it. Now I'm scanning the shelf to see if there is any other Viking glass pieces. But I'm not seeing anything. I spotted this candlestick holder here. This is, I believe, is soapstone, and it's a souvenir piece, more than likely from Africa. It's really nice. I like the colors, but it doesn't have a high resale value. Then I spotted a cookie monster on the shelf. This is just uh, to Eric, 1992. Over here, I don't usually like Avon, but there was something about this peacock perfume that I did like, and it warranted a look, but that was about it. Up here, this is an art pottery vase, but it does have a modern sticker on the bottom. Oh, it's a frog. Look at that. I'd actually picked up one of these uh, a few shopping trips ago at the same exact Goodwill. And so since there was another one, I decided, you know what, I'll grab another one. This shoe right here usually sells between eight and $12. Unfortunately, it has a chip on the rose. And so I leave that behind. This was interesting. I believe it should have had a stand It did not. Again, we have some more candlestick holders. I believe they're for pillar candles. They were signed on the bottom, and I did like the color and the quality of them, and they were layered, but I decided to pass on those. This piece right here was more than likely made in China. It is a planter, but it did look to have a little bit of age, and so I suspected it could be vintage, not necessarily antique. But I did like the design and I liked the colors of it. I felt like it could maybe be integrated into a boho design, but I could not get my camera to focus on it, so I robbed you of that experience. Nope, there we go, just kidding. <laughs> Now I wanted to take a closer look at this, but it was really badly damaged from going through the dishwasher. The graphic was really faded. This right here 
was Laurel Birch. It was $3.99. It was a teapot. I did like it, but you can see on the bottom it does have a crack. And the inside is very, very crazed and discolored. And there's a chip on the spout. And so for all of those reasons that I just stated, I decided that I didn't need that teapot. And I made sure that it did not fall off the shelf. Oh, hello, Fenton. <laughs> it is marked on the bottom. It has a foil sticker. It is a Fenton Deer. Unfortunately, it's not any specific color, but it would look great for Christmas. It's kind of crystal looking, ice looking. I feel like it's good winter decor. Unfortunately, that piece did have a crack. This was interesting. This was a bottle opener, and I'm like, well, that's cool, but I didn't need it, so I left it. Now these down here, I believe, are winterling. Let's take a closer look. Yes, I'm almost positive that's what they are, winterling. Um, they have really fun mid-century designs. I probably could have grabbed them. I probably could have made money on them, but I just didn't want to bother with them, which sounds silly, but um, they would have been a hassle to ship. This right here appears to be elegant glass. However, it is clear and I'm trying to cut back on buying clear glass because as much as I do like some of it, it's, it's a hard sell. And yes, there is a clear Fenton glass deer in my cart as I say that. Here we've got some amber glass. I like this piece. I know I've seen it before. I just can't remember who makes it. got a covered dish here it's gold and white porcelain it is marked on the bottom but I decided to be picky just because the gold is worn on the handle and I decided to leave that here we've got a Mexican pottery bird I look it over very closely because I remember there being one on the shelf the last time I was here that was broken but this one appears to be okay and it is marked Mex on the bottom And here we've got a little cup and plate. For those of you who did not see the last video I filmed here, I found one of these with foxes on it and I really liked it, but it was chipped and I had wanted to grab it for my kids, but it was just too damaged. So now I found a bare one and I can grab it for my kids. So pretty excited about that. That was not for resale. That was for me. modern plates I liked this pottery bowl it was super heavy though and it was just initialed on the bottom which made it difficult to possibly find the maker got an art pottery teapot kind of crude looking I liked it but I passed on it now this piece right here is probably a ceramics piece that somebody made I've bought them before but I passed on it this time now I decided to check through the Halloween briefly uh, this is where I found my nest creamer by Ray Dunn the last time That is false graph. <laughs> I'm not seeing any more nest creamers. I am seeing this cat. This cat looks vintage, but I feel like it's just meant to look vintage. It's not actually a vintage Halloween decoration. And that's really what I'm looking for when I'm looking through the Halloween. As far as resale goes, I'm really looking for vintage Halloween decorations. 
I do like that piece. I'm not going to lie. Now, as I'm filming this video, they are restocking the shelves, so you're going to see me go down the aisles multiple times. Um, in this case, I'm going back down the blue aisle and the red aisle, I guess. I'm trying to check those lower shelves because I am tall. I have a habit of just looking at the upper shelves. There's those plates again. Now I spotted this on the bottom shelf and I did find it interesting because it had a Ross sticker on the bottom. I believe it was made to look vintage and was not. It was a little frightening. I decided to reach back here because I noticed this box. Usually these are Chinese. There's usually Chinese treasures inside. And I decided to figure out what's in the box. I must know. Oh, it's a butterfly dish. Well, let's turn it over. No. Okay. So I decided to take it out and get a closer look. And I was really surprised at how fine and thin the porcelain is. You can basically see the light shine through it. It was, it was pretty thin and delicate, which I really liked. And I instantly felt bad for tipping the box over so many times. Um, but it wasn't broken. It wasn't chipped. It was in good condition. Back here, I found these plates. Now these, I believe, are vintage. And I liked the design on them, but they are big, they are bulky, and I'm just not a fan of shipping sets of plates. So I did leave those behind. Got some more art pottery here. This is also initialed. This little wooden snowman was pretty cool. It was likely vintage, but it looked like something was broken off that he would have been holding. And because of that, I, I decided not to grab it. He was cute, but he was made in China. There you can see they are restocking that aisle, hence the bin. This was really cute hanging off the side of the shelf. It made me very nervous. I was nervous putting it back on the side of the shelf, but it it obeyed and it stayed. Oh, wait, what do we have here? Oh, this is the style of tea. It's a box. It's tea in a box. <laughs> This piece right here was a nice porcelain. I thought it was a dish and there was a lid, but it was actually a music box. This right here, I spotted it right away. It's a brandy snifter. It actually has a Made in Italy sticker, the original sticker, so there's no doubt this is Made in Italy, possibly in poly glass, and it's got that optic appearance. I really liked that piece. I'm gonna have a hard time letting it go, but it's gotta happen. I can't keep everything. Now, I did spot these birds up here on the shelf. None of them had stickers on them, so I suspect they may have been part of a larger lot that got separated. But the one that really interests me was this one. It was really the only one, and that's because it had an Enarco sticker on the bottom. Not that Enarco is special, but Enarco is a company that I recognize. That one had a chip on the tail. I did pick it up, but then I spotted this. It is a golf ball dog. It was really, really super cute, but I left it there for the next person to enjoy. 
And I considered putting this in my cart, but I actually put it back up on the shelf because I was thinking it's probably worth, I want to say five to $10. And it just, it really, even though it was a bird, it just really wasn't worth it. Now I did, I did find this piece right here. This is Fitz and Floyd, unlike the pumpkin piece. And of course I had to check it out on the bottom. There you go. Fitz and Floyd classic. Some of these plates can sell for good money, especially around the holidays. They are easily chipped, so I always have to take a really close look just to make sure there's no chips on them. I did end up leaving this one behind just because it was a small dish, and it's the larger ones that tend to do the best. Now they rearranged this shelf since the last time I was there. Last time it was a lot of cookware and whatnot. Now it appears to be lamps and coffee machines. Um, not a whole lot there. Lots of electronics, which I don't really mess with. Just about this art pottery piece. It is signed on the bottom, but it's just a scribble. I have a hard time with scribble pieces. My mom used to have that crock pot. I decided to take a quick peek through the purses. Cause the last time I got a Machino purse, which is apparently a designer purse and very important. Um, I do have to get that authenticated before I list it because I would not list it without first having it authenticated. Now I spot this in the back. <laughs> it is a flower. A glass flower and I'm quite impressed that it survived honestly on the Goodwill shelves it survived there is not a single crack or chip on this piece which is really quite amazing um, I'm probably gonna end up keeping it for 99 cents and finding a place for it I don't even know if I could ship something like that without breaking it once and for all it survived the Goodwill shelves it deserves a full life. This piece I liked, it, it was etched, but it did have a giant chip on the rim, unfortunately. Back here, I noticed these bowls, but they were plastic, which was surprising. I thought they were glass. They were definitely plastic. There's some plates under there. Down here, there were some red chargers. I did pick up this blanket off the shelf and you might've seen it earlier, just hanging on the shelf. It was $2.99, I think it's vintage. And so I grabbed that. I saw this and I thought, you know, I paid, I think $60 to buy Juliet a shiny backpack from Claire's and I could have gotten it here at Goodwill for five bucks. I even told her that when I bought her the backpack. You know, I could find one at Goodwill, the same one, for like five dollars. That was the proof right there for next year when she needs another Claire's backpack. I found this little trinket box on the shelf. It does not want to focus for you. Oh, $1.99. It's a little letter. I liked it. But Dagny is not here to be my other set of hands, so I have to, ah, there we go. Maybe, look. There is a little, little card inside. I cannot get it to flip over. It said missing you or wish you were here or something like that. And then I spotted this hiding <laughs> for $2.99. It is a cat plate. It is a milk glass cat plate for $2.99. It is not marked on the back. I'm thinking it's Westmoreland, not positive. Now there is a crack there, which is unfortunate. It's clearly an old one. And I decided to grab the plate anyway.
this back here, I wasn't sure if this was, at first I thought it was a uh, gravy boat, but I suspect that it is actually a planter. It's kind of a nice planter. I liked the lines of it. But I did not like the lines of it enough to take it with me. I left it there. And then, what is this? This is a claw that goes to my crab. It belongs in the cart. Look, he is missing a claw. I didn't even realize it when I found him. I'm so glad that I found his claw. I would have been really upset if I got home and realized that he was missing a claw. Now I spotted this little dish down here. It looks like it could be bone china, but it is not marked. Maybe it was. It was marked under there. We may never know. I left it. Got a creamer here. Some mugs back there. This deserves to be on the front of the shelf. I thought that was a dog back there. It was the handle to a ladle. I like this little trinket box. I believe it was from grandma to granddaughter, set on the lid. And so I kind of moved it out front so it was prominently displayed. She set these on the shelf in front of me as they were restocking and I was so very tempted, but they're just so hard to ship. We've got some elegant glass there. Now, I found this, and this is Caprice shell? It's, it's a fancy shell. Um, this right here is a purse, and it is signed on the inside. It is signed Otilia. And these purses sell for like 20 to $30, and so I figured, why not? And there is an owl. He's looking up. Here is a USA planter. It was just kind of plain and ho-hum, even though I liked the color. Then I found this. This might actually be one of my, one of my favorite. Well, it's not my favorite, but I was really excited about this. I turned it over first. This is Old Town Square Plymouth Mass. And it is a scene of the Old Town Square in Plymouth, Mass. And those of you know that I'm from Massachusetts originally. So this was really exciting. I remembered going to Plymouth on field trips as a kid. And so I really was a fan of this plate. I have tried researching it. I can't find another one like it. This piece, I liked this planter. I, it had me very confused. It was super heavy. It was $3.99. It looked vintage, but I just had this sneaking suspicion that it was not. And I decided to go with that suspicion. Now these birds here, there are three bird plaques. They are something I would expect to see at my grandma's. They are $1.99. Actually, you know what? I think my grandma actually has these. My grandma loves birds. That was modern. We have another Indiana glass console bowl. Not worth much and a pain to ship. I liked this little cup. Unfortunately, it was all by its lonesome. But if there was a pair or more, I may have grabbed it. This wooden box was $1.99. I liked the tulips on the lid. And it was marked 93, I believe, was the date on it. It was signed and dated. But I did like the flowers on the lid. And I decided for $2 I would take it.
So that concludes our trip to the Goodwill. We've got a full cart and our total spend was $61. I feel like we got some really, really great pieces today and I'm really excited to see how they do on eBay. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, later. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. <laughs>